Hi everyone, welcome back to Mr. Carroll's classroom. Today we're going to talk about solving systems of equations. Let's get started. Okay, so since this is just an introduction, we're going to concentrate on a system of two variables with two equations. But you should know um, that if you have if you have two variables, then you have to have at least two equations in order to solve uh, for those variables. That's the minimum amount of information you need in order to solve. If you had three variables, then you have to have at least three equations, four, four equations, 100 variables, 100 equations, so on and so forth. Okay, um, we will concentrate um, today on two variables uh, with two equations, and uh, further on we will then move to three variables, three equations. Okay, so what exactly is a system of equations anyways? Um, with two variables, if you graphed a, a linear system with two variables, that's two equations um, with the x's and y's, or whatever variables you like, um, but essentially you're graphing two lines, okay? Um, however, you don't have to just solve this by graphing. You can also solve it using algebra too. So let's quickly cover the um, the number of ways that we can solve these because there are actually quite a few different ways that we could solve systems of equations all right first like i just said is graphing all right which we're going to cover what those uh possibilities are uh, in a second we could also do it algebraically using substitution which um you'd solve for one of the variables and then plug it into the other equation um to get one equation with one variable to solve you could also use elimination, where we would uh, essentially line up the two equations and then uh, add them together to get two, uh, one variable to cancel out, um, so we could solve for the other. And then you could also use matrices. Matrices are actually the most powerful way uh, to solve, uh, solve systems of equations. However, um, you essentially you really need a, a, a computer or calculator um, in order to solve these. So um, if I had a choice of how to solve any uh, any system, then I would definitely use matrices. Um, but if I didn't have access to a calculator or a computer, then um, you know I would either use graphing, substitution, or elimination, depending on the situation, depending on the information that I was given. Okay, obviously I'm going to choose the easier route. Okay, um, I do want to. We'll, we'll talk more about matrices in a in a lesson after this, but. I really want to reiterate the importance of matrices. Matrices are extremely powerful, an extremely powerful mathematical tool that we use very often today. Um, and it's really because of our use of computers. So with matrices, we can do a lot of math very quickly use, uh, using a computer with, with matrices. So um, you see this actually quite often with uh, um, a lot of data, for example, if we're trying to manipulate a lot of data, which we do a lot these days um, with computers, or if you were trying to manipulate, um, let's say, graphical components like a 3D animation, you would use matrices in order to do that. Um, and matrices can look uh, very difficult at first, um, but actually, you're really just doing some basic mathematics. You're just applying it to many equations at once instead of just one at a time. Okay, but we'll get we'll get more into matrices um, later on in this lesson. We're I'll, I'll show you an, a, an example with matrices, but um, but we're going to save that for a future lesson. Okay, all right. So let's go through these and what it would look like to solve actually solve a system of equations using um, each one of these methods. Let's start with graphing. Okay, so um, with graphing, I'm going to go ahead and uh, add in um, a little plane here, Cartesian plane, because when we when we graph an equation with two variables, what does it look like? Well, um, if it's a linear equation, then it's going to be a line, okay? In fact, if there's two of them, then there are going to be two lines. So there are actually three different cases for solving these, all right? The first one is when those two lines intersect. When these two lines intersect, then we can find one x and one y that will satisfy both of these equations. Or in other words, this one point, this little green dot here, this green x and y, um, lies both on the blue line and the red line. And there's only one of them. So how do we classify the solution? Well, we would say there is a solution, so we say it's consistent. And then since there's only one solution, we say it's independent. Okay. Next up would be consistent and dependent. Consistent, again, meaning there is a solution. Dependent, meaning there are 
um, an infinite number of solutions. It depends on the other line. So in this case, we have the red and the blue line completely overlapping each other. So no matter what point I choose on one of the lines, then it also lies on the other. So, um, so all of the solutions lie on either one of these lines. Um, so there are solutions. They happen to be an infinite number of solutions. Okay, but they have to fall on that line. All right. Um, okay, and then uh, we also the last case we have is inconsistent, meaning there is no solution. In what case would these lines never cross each other? Well, if they were parallel to each other and they were not the same line. In that case, I couldn't choose any point that would both be on the blue line and the red line at the same time. So there is no solution. So we call that inconsistent. So just to cover these classifications, um, uh, just so you're not confused because you will have to classify these. Um, if it's inconsistent, okay, if the system is inconsistent, there are no solutions and you're done, right? Inconsistent, no solutions. If there, if it's consistent, then that means there, there is a solution or at least one solution. So we go further and we say it's consistent. There's a solution. If it's independent, then there's only one solution. If it's dependent, then there are infinite, infinitely many solutions. Okay. Okay, so that's graphing, right? You just graph the two and uh, and you take a look at the cases and, and you can figure out what the solutions are, if there are any. Okay, so let's go ahead and I'm gonna take this away and let's remove this graphing and we're gonna go to substitution. Okay, so here's a, um, a a couple of equations here. We, we call this a system of equations. Um, they both contain x's and y's, and they aren't exactly lined up. So one strategy that we use to solve systems of equations is to line up the x's and the y's and the constants. Um, but in this case, um, with substitution, I actually might notice that the x is already all by itself, all right? It's isolated. x is equal to 25 minus 3y. So how would I use substitution in order to solve for x and y? Well, I can take that information and I can substitute, I can substitute the value of x, which is 25 minus, y, minus 3y, into this x right here. And be very careful when you do this. You want to make sure that whenever you're using substitutions, you put parentheses around everything because this is four times that whole expression for x. So in this case, four times this, this blue expression, 25 minus 3y. All right, now that I have substituted um, this expression for x, you can notice that I have one equation left and there's one variable y. So now I can go about just using my, my simple algebra to, to solve for this, all right? So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna distribute the uh, four into the 25 minus three y. Next step is going to be to um, isolate the y term, and then I'm gonna go ahead and uh, solve for the y term. So in this case, it's y is equal to 13. Now, what once I solve for one of these variables, I can go back up to any of the the um, the first equations, there are two equations in the beginning, and I can simply substitute uh, 13 in for that y to solve for x. It doesn't matter which one you use, so I'll just use the easier one. In this case, um, it probably would have been easier for me to use the bottom one, but I, I ended up uh, using the, the top one. So this 4x plus 5y is equal to 9. I went ahead and substituted this 13 in for the y, and then I went ahead and just solved for x at that point using basic algebra. Okay, so now I have y is equal to 13, x is equal to negative 14, and I can write my final solution. Okay, you should always write your final solution. I always put a little box around it, but this is an ordered pair, right? X is negative 14 and y is 13. What, is, what case is this um, for the terminologies? Um, well, first of all, this is a consistent system, meaning there is a solution, and it's an independent solution, meaning these lines cross, right? In fact, they cross at this point, negative 14, 13, okay? That is the point that's, that lies on both of those lines, all right? So it satisfies the system, okay? All right, um, so let me go ahead and I'm just going to back out of this substitution example. And let's move on to elimination. 
All right, so I've got another um, example for you guys. And so here's another system of two equations, two variables, x's and y's. Maybe I should have used some other variables. You don't have to have just x's and y's. Um, but anyway, um, now in this case, this system, you can see these terms are already lined up. Okay, we have the x terms on top of each other, the y terms, and then the constants are usually um, on the other side of the equal sign. Okay, they don't necessarily have to be, but that's how we typically do it. All right, um, now I want to reiterate, you could use substitution or elimination, all right, to solve any of these systems. Um, but in this case, it would be a little bit more difficult to use substitution because I would have to isolate one of these uh, terms, one of these variables, and um, and it looks like I would end up with fractions. Um, but if, if you notice when we line this up, these up that on top I have negative 3y and on bottom I have positive 3y. So what can I do with these two equations? Well, I can actually add these two equations together and the, the y terms are going to cancel out. Okay, So when I do add these together, everything lines up nice, I'm going to add negative 2x plus negative 5x to get negative 7x. These y terms cancel out, 0y is just 0. Um, and then 5 and negative 40 is negative 35. So what do I end up with? Well, I'm ending up with 7, negative 7x is equal to negative 35, and then I just solve for x. And there we go. So x is equal to 5. Now, once I solve for one of those variables, what do I do? Well, I go ahead and go back into any one of the originals and I plug that 5 in for x to solve for y. So in this case I chose the first one, the first equation again, I plugged in this 5 for for um, for the x and I then went ahead and solved for y. So y is equal to negative 5. Now this is not how you should record your final answer. You should record your final answer as an ordered pair which is 5 for the x and negative 5 for the y because that is the point at which these are intersecting. Okay. Now, um, for both of these, you uh, for both of these examples, we did end up with um, consistent and independent solutions, but it doesn't have to be that way. If you ended up with like say three is equal to five, well, you we know that three is not equal to five, and so that would in that case it would be no solutions. Okay, um, if you ended up with something like I don't know three is equal to three, well that's a true scenario right and so we would actually end up with uh, an infinite number of solutions they would be consistent and uh, and dependent so an infinite number of points on on either of the lines would uh, would suffice okay all right um so let's let me just show you now that um we're going to take away elimination. I'm going to show you matrices just so you can see. Uh, in another lesson, we're going to take a deep dive into matrices. Um, but uh, they are really, really cool and uh, extremely powerful. So let me go ahead and bring up an example. So uh, again, this is a system of two equations, two variables. And um, again, it doesn't matter uh, what the system is as long as it's linear, meaning that um, all the exponents are just one or or zero, um, then you can use matrices to solve these these things. So let's go ahead and see what this would look like as a matrix. So um, again, I want to go into too much detail, but this first step is to line up all the terms like we just did before for elimination. But then what we do is we actually take these coefficients for the um, x's and the y's, and we create this what's what's called a, a coefficient matrix out front. Then we have the variable matrix, which is x and y, which is what we're solving for. And then we have our um, our constant um, matrix, the 8 and the 13 over here. And um, with using some matrix uh, arithmetic and properties, um, what we can do is we can move the uh, the const um, the coefficient, sorry, the coefficient matrix over to the other side. There's no division in uh, uh, in matrix operations, but we can uh, multiply by the inverse of a matrix, um, which gives you the same effect. Um, so, but anyway, uh, again, we'll get into all these details. But basically, I end up with this x y matrix is equal to this calculation, which I can put in my calculator, and it will automatically solve it for you, getting something like this. The matrix x, y is equal to 5, negative 2, which means, you guessed it, the x is equal to 5, and the y is equal to negative 2. And once again, you would write your answer as an ordered pair 
five, negative two. So with matrices, you can get the calculator or computer to do all of the work for you, but we do need to understand what's going on. So we'll have a, a whole dedicated lesson um, to, uh, to, to learn how to use matrices, okay? Okay, so um, let's go ahead and um, I want to just talk very quickly about all of our methods for solving that you guys just saw. You can solve by graphing, right? We can graph uh, if it's two equations, two variables, then it's two lines and either they're gonna, they're gonna intersect, they're gonna be on top of each other, infinite solutions, or they're gonna be parallel to each other, which would be um, no solution, okay? We can use substitution or elimination, and we typically do this without a calculator. You'd be required to do this without a calculator. Um, and it really depends on uh, how the problem is set up. Go with whichever one you think will be easiest for that particular problem, okay? Um, and we also have matrices available to us, which are extremely powerful, but we can only use those really if uh, um, if we have a calculator or computer. You can actually do them by hand, but it wouldn't make sense to do it because it would actually be more work than just using substitution or elimination, okay? Um, the next step is to expand this, okay? We're gonna use the exact same methods to solve systems of three variables, three equations, um, but we're gonna learn what that actually looks like. When you have three variables, all right, it actually, uh, there are, and three equations, there are three what we call planes in space. And so we have a lot of different ways that different planes, like actual planes like this, can can intersect or be parallel or create like little triangles. Um, there's There are quite a few different um, possibilities there. And so we'll cover that in the next lesson, okay? All right, guys. So hopefully, again, you got something out of this lesson on how to solve um, systems of equations, specifically with two variables, two equations. All right, I'll see you in the next one.